Hello, I'm Scott, and I run Other Record Labels, which is a community and a podcast for indie record labels. And on the podcast, I've interviewed nearly 60 or 70 independent record labels over the years, and we talk about how to release music, how they promote music, and how they try to build multiple revenue streams and attract an audience. Today, what I want to do here in this video is to share some of those strategies with you uh, secrets, if you will, um, to independent artists to try to help you in your own journey of self-releasing music. I started out as an indie artist myself, self-releasing, figuring out how to make CDs, how to get onto iTunes and then Spotify, how to promote my singles or how to promote my album after release date. So I know where you're coming from. Okay. So let's dive in. What are the secrets and strategies that record labels utilize when signing um, new artists and and, and releasing records? That's what we're going to dive into. How can independent artists like you and I uh, and musicians steal these strategies in in an ethical way, of course, and and techniques when releasing our own music? Um, And why having a sustainable and successful career in music is something that everyone should be able to have. And I think there's a lot of things that we can learn from record labels uh, that will help us no matter where we are in uh, the, the, the journey of releasing music. Okay. So the problem is is artists write and record their record and then say, what do I do now? Like what, you know, and that's what we're going to discuss today because I mean, having the music and creating the music is the fun part. And then you hit this uh, stressful wall, right? And so I'm going to show you what record labels would do once they receive the masters. What would they do once they have a record done and ready to promote? And I'll talk to you about some of these uh, strategies and then see how we can apply them to independent artists. You know, when I talk to to independent artists occasionally, um, we talk about what it means to get signed and why do they want to get signed. And obviously, it, you know, usually it breaks down to three things. Industry expertise is something that they wish they had access to. So people who knew how to press vinyl, people how, who knew how to get on Spotify playlists or to get into record stores, for example. Funding, actual just cash to make vinyl or, or to pay a publicist. And then uh, finally is this built-in audience, this idea, whether it's true or not, that they have this community, they have this uh, audience that already exists that follows their label. And if they release their album through that label, they'll get access to all those fans. And so we're going to talk about some workarounds, how you can achieve a lot of those things without actually needing to get signed, but being your own record label. We're not necessarily today going to talk about how to, to, uh, start your own record label. That's not what this is about. This is about learning some of the, the secrets and strategies from independent record labels and, and how we can, as independent artists can, can, can use those to essentially be our own record label. Um, I want to, let's move my head out of the way here for a second. I want to tell you to grab this free download. Uh, it's called the be your own record label toolbox. And in here it's free. You can download it at otherrecordlabels.com slash toolbox but I'm going to throw in a bunch of resources. I've got some coupons from some industry people that I work with that I can share with you, but I also have a template on how to write an artist bio, which is something that's always super annoying. Um, I've also got some promotion checklists, a release roadmap, some other cool things that I'm going to share with you. Uh, Just go to otherrecordlabels.com slash toolbox, and you can download that for free right now if you haven't already. Today, real quick, we're going to how to think like a record label, how to budget like a record label, how to release music like a record label, how to promote music like a record label, and how to operate like a record label. So have a pen and paper uh, ready because we're going to dive into these. I'm going to try to go pretty fast here. Okay. How to think like a record label. Record labels think long term. Um, Think of this quote. I, I love this quote. People overestimate what they can do in a year but underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Let me say that again. People overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Record labels are good at thinking in the long term, 10 year long term, five year long term, uh, even just like a one year long term. Instead of saying my release day is today, the album's coming out today, but to think, what can I do with this album over the next year? And that's what I think is really important. I think that record labels are good at thinking long-term. They're very patient and artists are not very good at that. We create something and we try to get it up right away. So this is really important for artists to realize is that we need to write something, record something, hang on to it and properly release it, not just 
share it with everybody on SoundCloud right away, although unless that's your thing, but to hold on to it, to be strategic with our releases and then not to judge ourselves after the first week or the first month uh, that something like a single or an album has been out, but to give it a long time uh, to for us to, to think long term. Record labels also think holistically. Not everything that counts can be counted. Not everything that can be counted counts, meaning there are things that we think are important, like how many Instagram followers we have. But over time, we realize that doesn't really uh, pay the bills necessarily, or those people don't necessarily go over to Spotify or over to Bandcamp to buy our records. Whereas my email list, all of a sudden, there's 50 people on there um, uh, compared to 5,000 people on Instagram, but those 50 people actually buy things. Um, and then there's things that we invest money into, like mastering or a publicist, and we realize wow, actually that didn't really make an impact. And so to think holistically and to look at everything that we do and to be very careful with um, putting too much pressure on, on certain areas. Okay, so now we're going to dive into the finances of things and how to budget like a record label. What's very important is that we have realistic financial expectations with how a single is going to do or an album is going to do or a CD is going to do or EP is going to do or a vinyl pressing is going to do. You know, it's very easy for us to run away and to think if this is our first project, oh, of course we're going to sell 100 records or yeah, I'll press 500 CDs or, or 200 tapes and then uh, to be a little bit disappointed. So record labels will do lots of research. They will look at the genre, they'll look at the audience, they'll look at comparable artists to see how many units they should press or what type of uh, financial expectations they can have. If an artist has been doing this for a while, they can look at previous releases and say, okay, we made $5,000 on your previous release, so let's not spend $10,000 on manufacturing and a publicist because you know the chances of us doubling what you made on the last record just to break even is, is going to be tough. So let's keep things, uh, you know, uh, fiscally responsible. So have realistic expectations of your finances. The other thing is to keep expenses low. I mean, this is one of the beautiful things. Like it's like offense and defense. You can win a game, uh, by only scoring one goal, as long as you keep the puck out of your net or whatever you want to say. But this is really important. This is something I try to do with my label and as an independent artist, but if I can spend you know, uh, a few hundred bucks on, on recording a record, then all I need to do is make a few hundred bucks more to break even. But if I spend $20,000 on making a record and, and pay the best mastering engineer and the, and the best publicist and all of this stuff, uh, then all of a sudden I have to earn so much more. So if you keep your expenses low, then your revenue doesn't have to be as high in order for you to turn a profit. And then of course, with when it comes to budgeting, we want to think about intentional investments. So we want to stop for a second and say, listen, and this goes back to thinking holistically, do we need to hire a publicist? Do we need to hire a radio promo guy? Do we need to hire a mastering engineer if we know someone who can do a decent job? We need to really be intentional with this. All of those things that I just mentioned are very important, but if we're trying to keep our expenses low, let's stop for a second and really think about these things. Are they important? Are we going to be able to release our music without it? Uh, is it essential for us to, to survive and do well? Now, you may think all of those things are. That's okay. Okay, let's talk about how to release music like a record label. I'm not going to talk too much about recording, mixing, and mastering because a lot of record labels often receive the masters, which is the, the finished recording, the, the absolute finished final wave files of your single or the 10 songs on your album or the four songs on your EP. A lot of record labels will receive that and then start the manufacturing and distribution and promotion process after they've received that. There's lots of videos out there that you can go to about recording and mixing stuff, but let's assume that you have everything done. Although I will just say, make sure you keep your expenses low when you're doing all that. And it's okay to start the planning process while you're in the recording and mixing stage. You can start to get some quotes. You can start to do some research during that stage. It's always good to be ahead of time. When it comes to manufacturing and distribution, Record labels think about a lot about lead times, which generally means a lead time is the day, uh, the time between getting your masters, so getting the WAV files from the mastering engineer or just finished audio files in your hands, the time between that day and release day. And so we're going to talk about how long that should be in the next slide. But 
for now, I just want you to understand what I mean by lead times. And so with lead times uh, and manufacturing, we want to think about how many quantities we need. We want to be realistic about our lead times because when it comes to manufacturing right now, um, things can take a really long time. So make sure you do your research very early so that you know on release day, and, and this is very important, but release day, that whenever whatever day that is that we pick, we want to make sure that we have the CDs in hand or the vinyl in hand so that everything can all come out at once. Um, also be very realistic with, you know, the, um, the quantities that you're, you're producing. Um, you might think, Hey, listen, the price difference between 400 and 500 is not that much, or price difference between 200 and 300 is not that much, but you still need to be realistic. You don't want to have tons of those sticking around your garage as I do. Uh, physical distribution is important. Um, uh, you know, but it's not something that's accessible to independent artists. So just be aware that some of the things I'm talking about, I'm trying to show you where we can um, break down some barriers and and, and to uh, eliminate gatekeepers. But physical distribution into retail is still um, a little bit out of the range of independent artists because they distributors like to work with record labels who have a big catalog. So working with just one artist for one title or even two titles is a little bit challenging, not something that distributors want to do. Having said that, you can still reach out to your local record store, bring a record by when it's ready, a, a press one page or send them an email ahead of time and say, hey, listen, I'm a local artist. I'd love um, to offer you two or three copies on consignment, maybe give you one for free for the store to listen to and then give away in a contest. Um, here's what the music sounds like. Try to make it easy for them, follow up with them and, and, and help them uh, with keeping track of your inventory. Don't make the record stores work too hard. It's your album. You're going to have to tell your fans to go to that store, to pick up the record, to do the promotion. That's really important. When it comes to digital distribution, you want to find a reliable distributor. Um, there's lots of resources out there to help you do that. I'm going to assume that you know where to go. Um, but with record labels, they will use a distributor, uh, a consistent distributor, and they will use someone that they trust and that they will use across the board. And so you want to find a distributor and ideally one that has uh, a rep that you can reach out to and someone that you speak to uh, on a personal level. I have worked with CD Baby for 12 years and I have a rep there and I love them and we've worked well. I'm now working with a company in the UK called Three Tone Music, who I also love and I have a rep with them. I'm very happy with those two providers. You can check them out if you want. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Um, I know that DistroKid is super popular um, and, and there's tons of other options, but those are the two that I've been using. Regardless, make sure that you have ample lead time when you upload a single. Don't upload a single and expect it to come out in a couple of days. Don't upload an album and expect it to come out in a couple of days. Give these companies lots of time. Allow it to be ingested in your Spotify for artists account so that you can pitch a single or a couple singles ahead of time before the album comes out. So make sure you're utilizing lead time like we've been talking about when it comes to digital distribution. Now let's jump into how to promote like a record label. And we're going to talk about an album campaign. When we talk about an album campaign, we're really talking about three kind of eras or sections of the timeline. The pre-release, that's before the album comes out, or single, this applies to single as well. Um, release day, that's the actual Friday uh, that the album or the single comes out. And then post-release, which is something a lot of us don't think about, but that means the promotional efforts that we're going to plan for in the days, weeks, and months after release day. Now, I wanna talk about lead times. I've been saying that phrase a lot because it's very important. When it comes to promotion, when I pick a release day, and remember, uh, lead times are the, the day that we get the masters to the actual release day. What do I like? Well, for singles, I think a minimum three to four weeks. I like to have the, alb the single, the artwork's done. It's been sent. It's already mastered. It's been sent to the digital distributors. Uh, it's already uploaded on Bandcamp. I have a, a press one sheet already put together, and I've been sending it out to press three to four weeks before it comes out. Don't send anything earlier or later than that. Even earlier than that, you might get into the thing of where people start to forget about it. If you say, I've got a single coming out in two or three months, that might not work. Three or four is kind of ideal. 
much longer when it comes to LPs and maybe is true for EPs, maybe somewhere in between, but for LPs, it's two to three months. There's a lot of people, they want to make sure that the press have it and that they have enough time to write about it, that your distributors have enough time to think about it uh, and, and to uh, to get it ingested in the system. And of course you want that um, pre-release singles. If you have an album, a lot of record labels will drop four or five singles leading up to release date. And so you don't want to cram all of those in a, a, a four week period. It's great if you can do that over three or four months. When I released my last record, I, it came out in October and I started releasing singles in May and I started sending it to the press in like July. So just look for a lead time that works for you, but keep these numbers in mind. Another thing a record label does, and I learned this from my music publicist friend, is they gather their promotional assets. Think of assets, you know, we think of like the things that you own, right? Like uh, your house and your car and I don't know, maybe your computer or when a company has assets, they think of all the product that they own. Well, the same is true for an independent artist and the same is true for a record label. An asset and a promotional asset are valuable things that you have uh, in a folder, sometimes an actual folder, uh, a digital folder that you have that you can use and utilize to promote your upcoming release. So that's things like pre-release singles. We already talked about album details. I mean, think of when a big band, uh, like, uh, Kanye or, uh, U2 or Arcade Fire, you know, announce that they have a new album coming out and they're going to leak the track list in a couple of days, or when Taylor Swift shares just a portion of her album cover and slowly unveils the whole thing. That is what I mean by having this promotional asset. It's something that the fans are excited about seeing, or that will drive a little bit of interest on your social media platforms, uh, or, or on Spotify. And so you want to make sure you hang on to those things and you strategically plan how you're going to drop those things, release those things and utilize those assets to help promote your upcoming release. So album details, uh, videos in studio videos, um, even just like an iPhone video describing the song, an upcoming tour, uh, any video content, like I mentioned and anything else, um, that you might have. I, I started making these social graphics that were explaining the songs that were on the upcoming album. It could be a audio commentary that you release on YouTube or write directly on Spotify um, where you explain the record. Uh, whatever it is that you can utilize, behind the scenes content is huge that you can slowly share in that three uh, section time period before the album comes out uh, on release date. And even there's stuff that you can hang on to for post-release. And so maybe there's a music video that is still in the works, it's not going to be ready for release day. Or even if it is ready for release day, you hang on to it and you release it three months after the album comes out as a way to kind of generate interest again in the album for anybody who may have missed it. Something to think about. How to operate like a record label. Number one is to be intentional. Record labels are really good at having this total year perspective when it comes to promotions and it, when it comes to initiatives, let me, uh, give you this example here. I like to think of it as daily interactions. So these are things that you should be doing as an independent artist, literally every day, every week, every month, every quarter. It's a, listen, if you want to be a full-time artist, you've got to work full-time at it. it that's it, it's hard work. I know you're gonna look at this and go, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. Well then I don't know what to say, but like, if you're watching this video, if you've gotten this deep, obviously you're very committed to your career as I am to mine. And so there's a lot of things that we got to do. And so when I look at this, I, as you can see in the, in these four examples here under the, the total year perspective, basically as the quality or the value of the content, uh, goes up, the frequency goes down and the opposite is true as the, the, the quality or the, the value of the content goes is lower. The frequency is higher. So let me explain. I see, uh, a, you know, how the promotional strategy of record labels to be daily interaction. So that's things like responding to email, sending out tweets, uh, Instagram stories behind the scenes. Those are daily interactions with your audience. Then there's weekly content, things like a TikTok that you take a little bit of time to film and plan out. 
Maybe it's a podcast episode or a YouTube video that takes a little bit more effort to put together. So the, the content, the quality of the value of that content is slightly higher than daily interactions. Then there's monthly initiatives. So these are kind of big things that you plan for, like a sale, a Black Friday sale, a, a summer sale on, on some of your products, or a newsletter, or maybe it's something like uh, a show that you're planning or an event. And then quarter re- quarterly releases, um, something like uh, a single or an EP or a music video, something that is high value and, and really, really important content that you uh, release every quarter. Now, obviously, you can work outside of this um, paradigm here, the outside of this, this strategy plan that I'm, you, you know, and I do that too. Sometimes I do two products in one week or I do two singles in one month, or then maybe I do an entire quarter where I don't release anything. But this is just to show you how we can kind of build a plan for ourselves to stay connected with our audience, to always remind our audience to go and to listen to us on Spotify, providing a link or, or to go in and download our album on Bandcamp or to, to pick up some new merch. And then when you think about new initiatives, like what am I doing this quarter? What am I, what am I creating that somebody might want to buy? Is it a single? Is it an album? Is it a t-shirt? Is it a lyric book? Uh, is it a really great music video or a documentary? And we want to be thinking monthly. What is the great piece of content that I'm putting together? Is it a newsletter that gives an update of what I've been working on? Is it a big summer sale where I put all of my records on for 50% off or, or I give free downloads to everything? We want to be thinking about that. We also want to be strategic. Number two, always know what your what you want your fans to pay attention to. So I think it's important for record labels, and the same is true for independent artists, to have a primary target. What do I mean by that? If you could only send your fans or your soon-to-be fans to one destination, what would that be? Well, you might be thinking, well, my SoundCloud, or also my Bandcamp, or actually maybe my Spotify profile. Uh or you know what? I'm really funny on TikTok. So maybe my TikTok or, or maybe it's Instagram. We always think that everything is equally important and that's not true. We need to have a hierarchy when it comes to our content and when it comes to our web properties. And so record labels know most of our money is made on our web store. And so they drive people to their web store or some artists just do extremely well on Spotify. So they drive people to their Spotify or somebody, some people are just incredible on YouTube and that just seems to be where they're blowing up or on TikTok. And so we need as artists to think, where do I want people to go? And so on your Twitter, on your Instagram, on your TikTok profile, on your website, you want everything to point to that primary target, that primary location. So that might take uh, a couple of days for you to figure out what that is. Uh, Where do you make the most money? Where do people support you? Where do people follow you? Where is the most engagement happening? Three, uh, two other things uh, when it comes to how record labels operate. Record labels are consistent, and a good record label is consistent. They're consistent through visual consistency. So when you see uh, a record label logo on their profile picture on Twitter, that logo is also going to be seen on their Bandcamp page or on their homepage on their website or across the board. And that's really important that you do the same thing as an independent artist is that there is a visual consistency. So when you have a new press photo and you're promoting a new album, that that press photo is the same across all of your social media profiles so that they know that you're up to date across the board and that they have the same artist. So when somebody discovers you on Spotify, this happens to me all the time. Someone discovers me on Spotify and they want to follow me on Instagram. Well, the profile picture on my Instagram is the same as it is on Spotify. So when they click over or they search for me on Spotify, Instagram, they see the same profile picture, even though the usernames are different or whatever, they still know they've got the right person. So we want to aim for that consistency. Another way to be consistency, uh, to be consistent is to continue to show up, show up on Christmas morning and wish your audience a Merry Christmas. Show up when you don't have anything to promote. That's really important. Um, don't just to, to log into your social media accounts and, and, and reclaim your passwords whenever you have something to promote or when a new album's coming out and then you're dead for, for, six months or a year. It's important to uh, make sure that you are always showing up. And then, and this speaks to the final thing, which is to be prolific. What does prolific mean? It means to always be writing, 
always be recording, always be creating, always be interacting with people. That's really important. I know this is going to sound like a really gross thing to say, but we think about big brands. We think about people like McDonald's or Apple or whatever. And I know as artists, we don't compare ourselves to corporations, but they show up every day and they're prolific in the sense that they're always tweeting. They're always have commercials online. Their lights are always on in their stores. They're always coming up with new sales, new products. And that's how successful businesses operate. And as independent artists and entrepreneurs, if you will, um, we need to be thinking the same way. So continue to be prolific and people will love that about you. They'll be drawn to your consistency because consistency is persistency in a way. Persistency, is that a word? I don't know. The final thing is attention to detail. Um, <clears throat> you can use organizational templates like Google Sheets to help you stay organized. In fact, I have like an album sheet that I'll include in the toolbox that I use a, a Google Sheet that uh, helped me keep all of my album information for a new release in one place so that when somebody asked me for a private Spotify link or uh, you know, a UPC code or uh, a Dropbox link for a press photo that I have it all in one central location, I'll share that with you that you can download for free in otherrecordlabels.com slash toolbox. The other thing is platform best practices. So think about when you're signing up an artist page on Bandcamp or on Spotify, they ask you to fill in all these details, right? And sometimes we skip over them because either we're lazy or we're trying to be mysterious uh, as an artist. And so we maybe don't fill in some of the things or do some of the things or upload some of the things. Um, that's not a great way of thinking. It's really important that we follow the best practices of any of these platforms to increase our chances of these platforms featuring us or for us just to be successful on these platforms. Let me give you two examples. Number one is on Spotify, they have these Spotify canvases. So it's like this motion graphic or a video that plays on a loop behind the song. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why this thing is important. I think it's ridiculous, but Spotify wants you to upload a canvas for every single one of your songs. I don't know why, I don't know what it does, but Spotify is a billion dollar company. They've done their research. They've been working on this product. I know that because I have a friend two years ago who was using this in beta. And I know that they've been working on this for like two or three years, that this is a very important product. For some reason, they've researched that this is a way to engage with fans. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, it's important to them. And so I think that when you upload a canvas to your songs, even though we don't get it and our, maybe our fans don't get it or don't know why it's there, it's still important to do because it's important to the platform and it increases our chances of being featured uh, on a playlist by Spotify or, or being favored by Spotify. I'll give you another example and that also has to do with Spotify. A couple of years ago, I was releasing an album and I got an email from Spotify and this staff member at Spotify said, hey, we would like to feature you on the cover of a playlist that you're going to be on on this upcoming Friday when your new album drops. Please send us a high-res photo, press photo, to be used as the cover photo of this playlist. Now, of course, this is like a humble brag. It was a huge thing. It was like uh, uh, one of my greatest accomplishments. It was so fun. It was such an honor. Um, and then at the end of, so I responded right away. I sent them a press photo. Then she responded back and said, in the future, make sure you upload high-res press photos to your Spotify artist account. You know, when you click on about, you can see extra photos other than just the profile picture. She said, make sure you include extra photos for us to use so that we can just quickly grab one if we want to include you on the cover photo of a playlist. I had never thought of that. I just thought it was there for people who wanted to see my face, which was stupid. So I never put photos in that thing. I never put a bio in there thing. I never updated it. I never put my social media links on the, the site. I just didn't think it mattered. But of course it matters. It's there for a reason. And that's a prime example. Luckily, that person reached out to me. But how many of you have, have Spotify looked over because you don't have a press photo? And so you can bet I always put a, a press photo in there. So platform best practices. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. We talked about how to think like a record label, how to budget like a record label, how to release music like a record label, how to promote music like a record label, and how to operate like a record label. It's really important you grab this toolbox because I'm going to, and I'm going to continue to update it, but I'm going to throw all of these resources that I have, and it's a free download you can grab. Go to otherrecordlabels.com slash toolbox, uh, and, and everything that I have in there will hopefully 
help you in your journey of being a self-releasing artist. And I know how difficult it is, but I think if we can steal and implement some of these, I say steal in a good way, of course, uh, implement some of these strategies and these secrets of, of how record labels operate, we can do that as independent artists. I think that's going to give us a, a leg up. Um, and I think it's really important. There's a lot that we can learn from record labels. I love record labels, but I'm also an independent artist and I was an independent artist before I started my own record label. And before I started working with record labels, I was an independent artist and I still am an independent artist. So that's where my heart is. And I hope you found this helpful.